You can catch this man who's sitting right next to me with me uh, tonight on NFL Network's new anthology show, NFL 360, uh, at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. He's sitting down with Antonio Brown tonight, but right now he's sitting down with us. Good to see you, Mark Kriegel. How are you? I'm very impressed. What about? By our lavish surroundings. The studio here? Yeah. You, ex- you want to explore the studio space I, I, I've done enough, and I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed. I'm, Thank you, I'm, Mark. I'm jealous. Uh, what are you jealous I, of? The, the abundance, the opulence, the <laughs> Hugh Hefner-esque illusions, <laughs> no, the decor. Hold on a minute. Is there, is, is there a grotto behind Mike Del Tufo I didn't know about? I've been here 20 months. I haven't seen a grotto. <laughs> if there, there is, he's, he's living better than he has any right to. <laughs> <laughs> but, I love it when people who know the guys here stroll in here. Del Tufo, you know the the Chris Command Center. We're all NFL media group types. Like I said before, Del Tufo, much to my admiration, yes, is a Talmudic scholar of disco music, which is, in fact, America's <laughs> indigenous, truly indigenous folk music, disco. Disco is a true. bad rap. Yeah, it gets it. I'm a child of the '70s, you know. Well, we are. I know. So did you? Were you at discos in the in Brooklyn in the '70s? Were you? I, I were you, at, doing well, Fever, you doing Saturday Night Fever, Kriegel? I was doing that? discos. Somewhat unsuccessfully, um, <laughs> in the '70s in Manhattan, where you could still like sneak in. Yeah, I had, I had a basketball coach, who one of the owners at Studio 54 mm-hmm. played for him, so we could like, oh yeah, let let in the, the coach and and those kids too, which is I'm sure highly illegal, illegal. inappropriate, everything. <laughs> yes, but. It's amazing that you're loose. It was another and, life. And, and society, another life. Yes. Mark Kriegel here. You me on out the, to California. Yeah, you did with the NFL media group. Where do you stand on the subject we have now? Kevin Durant, if he goes to the Warriors, would you say that he would deserve scorn because he's going to a winner that just knocked him out of the playoffs in the same way that, you know, I did mention, I did call it revisionist history mm-hmm. that people were were. Uh, had scorn for LeBron James because he went to Miami. I understand people were saying you shouldn't have gone to Miami to go play with two superstars like Wade and Bosh. Mm-hmm. I thought part of the issue of him going was the way that he left. But where do you stand on the subject if, if Durant leaves or any superstar leaves any sports team via free agency to join the winners? For LeBron, okay, I thought that the, the problem was one of colossally bad methodology. The way he got out was, was horrible. Mm-hmm. It was produced poorly, and it, it looked bad for Cleveland. <clears throat> um, I'd have no beef if he did it. Otherwise, it is, in fact, his decision. We are a free market society, last I heard. Um, I have no problem if Durant wants to go there. It is his right. He has earned that right. Um, we see coaches, in, especially in college, leave all the time, and it's done with all the – All the time. With, with, with all the, like – with the idea that they're doing something for the kids, which I think is – is, is nonsense, but Durant has, Durant has this right. Tactically, I just don't see how that thing works. He is a shooter, first and foremost. You have two of the best pure shooters ever to play, maybe the best pure shooter ever to play on the team already, and you do have this problem about how many balls are you going to play with. I think in the case of the, the hypothetical case of Durant going to uh, the Warriors, you know, it, it's – how can you, how can you use, is this the best use of your resources or is it duplicative? I always think mm. that a real championship team needs a player like a Mark Ivoroni, like a Charles Oakley, Scott Brocious, like a Horace Grant for for baseball, uh, right? In, in in basketball, it's even more. Draymond Green does it really well. I could, mm-hmm. I think you could use another guy like that, a big body, not um, afraid to sacrifice it, uh, high rebounds doesn't need plays run for him. So I, I don't know how it works tactically. If he wants to do it, God bless him. He has to, however, be ready for all the hell that would come his way, not for going, but for not winning. So the presumption becomes, if you add Durant to this roster, mm-hmm. you sure as hell better win. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm assuming, having seen what went on in the past, the political mistakes that LeBron made, um, he won't do it like that. He'll do it with a great sense of humility. Um, after all, he has not proclaimed himself the, the king. Uh, at least I haven't heard it. So, but, but once he makes that move, if he were to make that move, mm-hmm. the presumption is you better win. Sure. And I, I, I've got Mark Kriegel here on the Rich Eisen Show as a biographer of Pistol Pete. What do you think of the comparisons between Curry 
and Maravich? I think they're eerily exact, except for one big thing. Okay. He moves most like, of, of any player I've seen. Curry? You talking Curry about? moves most like Maravich than any guy I've ever seen. I'm, I'm talking about the way the ball comes off his hand, the ease with which he gets up a shot, um, the, the, the fluidity of, of the game, the sense of imagination, um, even the, the, the idea that at some level, however schooled he is and however drilled he is, it's a kid playing a game. The difference between Curry and Pistol is Curry is much like Pistol, a little shorter, but without all the mishigas, without all the craziness, without all the father-son issues, what attracted me to a subject like Maravich? To write about. To, 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 to be his biographer. Mm -hmm. was, was, was all the craziness, the darkness, the, the, the father-son issues, which were, were obvious and intense. Um, they, they began a generation before, you know, Maravich became a, a household name. There were other sideshows to the Maravich story that Curry doesn't have to deal with. I mean, I think that he was he was greeted as basketballs, if not first, then its greatest. Bill Bradley might have been the first in some way, but as the game began to change culturally, uh -huh. racially, demographically, Pete was the the white superstar that was going to save the game. He was he was the great white hope. Mm -hmm. And he was cast in a completely un there, there was no way he was going to win that. Not only that, he went to the exact perfectly wrong team for him to go to. He went to the Atlanta Haw Hawks on the cusp of the 70s, which was a very good black, predominantly black team of veterans, guys who really knew how to play the game mm -hmm. um, in the deep south. So all these guys who had been playing really well for quite a long time, the, the, the only problem in the Western Conference is they, they couldn't beat West and Chamberlain. All of a sudden... It was like, hey, hail the new boy king, the white guy from LSU. So it, it put him in a, in a terrible, terrible position with his teammates and even with the rest of the league. I got Mark Kriegel, uh, NFL Media Group's Mark Kriegel right here. He's on NFL 360 tonight, and we'll talk about uh, Antonio Brown in a moment. Before we do go to break, I have a couple minutes uh, left in this segment. Uh, Pat Riley, you knowing him as well as you do as well, covering him in New York, Once writing about him. Uh, for Esquire, what do you think he's going through right now? Because on the flip side of this conversation, we have that LeBron got grief for going to Miami. Riley won his championships by getting a collection of superstars, mm -hmm. one of whom looks like he might be leaving as well. And Dwayne Wade, LeBron's gone. Chris Bosh was basically deactivated, or he's uh, unhealthy. One of the two things you can read. What do you think Riley's going through right now well, in I South think Florida? In, right now, he's figuring out a way to get Kevin Durant and to prevent him from either staying in Oklahoma, which I would do if I were Durant, or you know, going to the Warriors. Um, I think, listen, this is a really resourceful guy. And the best recruiter of multimillionaires we've ever seen in any sport. He built that thing. What, what, there was a time, not in the distant past, where it seemed like Phil Jackson was the guy you'd want to be, or Phil Jackson had the more successful mm -hmm. career as opposed to Pat Riley, and they've been rivals. They were both drafted in 1967. I think with the evidence of the last few years, you'd have to easily go with Riley, that Riley has done something that no coach has really done since Red Auerbach, which is an exercise in empire building. And I was there, you know, when he left New York and he came to Miami, which at that time, it was not a basketball town. It was not a sports town. It, was, it had really nice weather. And he built that thing, and he made it a destination where players will want to come. So he, I, I think his, you know, his immediate problem is ensuring that Hassan Whiteside returns. Then you can start from there. But I think that he'll be, I think that he'll be fine in the long run. Mm -hmm. I think that there is a, a succession plan. He, he re-signed Eric Spolstra. Um, so I, I think that in the long run, they'll be okay. They've, they've been down before. And in the short run, they need Durant. When we come back, we'll talk about a Western PA star by way of Central Michigan who started in South Florida that you're featuring tonight on NFL 360 and Antonio Brown. Mark Kriegel is here on the Rich Eisen Show. We're back with more in a minute. 844 rich We will take your calls as well. Do you think Durant should stay put? Or do you think if he goes, there would be scorn for him if he goes to 
Don't Golden score. State, the Talmudic scholar of disco, playing us out. Come on. There we go. Tonight's NFL 360 on NFL Network at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. Mark Kriegel sitting down with Antonio Brown. He is he is that size. I mean, I know he wants to – he plays bigger, and he does. He truly is in our day and age that we're talking about Des Bryant, talking about Calvin Johnson, mm -hmm. who's now retired, obviously. You talk about these big, tall dudes outside the numbers who run like deers. What he's doing is unbelievable. Mark. He is – and I, obviously, I, I do a lot of boxing – Pound for pound. Yes. He is the best football player on the planet and has been for quite some time. He's 5'10". Um, he was a buck 80 when he was drafted. I don't care what he says. Yeah. And the way he trains, he, he put some stuff up on Instagram or Twitter or whatever that stuff is I don't even know how to use, um, <laughs> of, of new training stuff that he's doing after practice. Yeah. Like, Rich, I'm telling you right now, if you do this stuff, if you train, you spend two weeks with Antonio Brown, my bet is you get under four or five. <laughs> I'm, that's what I think. You're, talking, that's you're what not I talking think. height, right? You're talking no, about I'm talking, speed. I'm talking your burst, baby. I'm talking <laughs> burst. But we, we do have this notion, um, and, and, and Calvin Johnson articulated it yeah. most perfectly, that the prototype or the archetype for a receiver is supposed to look like like the Silver Surfer comic book, you know? He's supposed to be like a, a perfect human specimen, 6'5", 240. Um, and here comes this guy, 5'10". He is the best sixth-round pick since Tom Brady. There's no doubt about that. I would and agree with that. And he is underpaid. Uh, he doesn't make a big deal out of it. I'm, I'm sure he wants to build his brand with that, that the haircut. Square head, is, the square is, hat, yeah. Is, in fact... Inimitable and business and is booming. Should be. That, that's yeah. his saying, right? His business is booming. And you know what, too? Uh, do you remember when Mike Wallace was holding out? Yeah. And the Steelers said, Well, we're gonna See pay Antonio later. Brown anyway. And we and everyone was just like, What are the Steelers doing? And well, they were they were they were sly as a fox, is Patrick, what they were doing. Yeah, Patrick Peterson said the other day that Antonio Brown is the most difficult guy in the league to cover because of his speed, because of the way he, he, he puts his weight makes it difficult to, to tackle. Um, also, it, like we used to say about basketball players before we had this horrible, these horrible offenses, uh, before the Warriors at least, um, he's always running. He's always moving. You always have to keep an eye on him. And what he did last year, without hesitation, I say, he should have been the MVP of the league. If, if he weren't knocked out of that final game, you can make an argument. What they lose by seven, eight points to oh, Denver? They, they, you look at that final score. That okay. AFC, that, that, Perfect that a cheap hit yep. may have changed the course of football history. It's conceivable. I'm not saying it's likely, but it is in fact conceivable. Knocking him out of of the game again, the playoff game against Denver, uh, may have cost him because he was the MVP of the season. Our stack guys at the NFL Network came up with this spectacular number. If Roethlisberger hadn't missed, I think it's like six games. Hmm. I remember Le'Veon Bell was out too. If he had that, that Antonio Brown would have wound up with in excess of 2,100 yards. 23-16 was the final. It was a seven-point yeah, game. Seven-point game. And that that hit on Brown, and everyone was thinking, oh, he'll, he'll come back for that game. He'll come back. And even Burfick was even – you remember uh, Adam that Jones was saying that, you know, that he would basically eat yeah. his hat. That he was going to win a, a Grammy or something right, like which that. Which I think that. For his acting. A Grammy. You know, yeah. I, right. I, I, I didn't see a, a severe enough or heartfelt enough mm -hmm. apology from Adam Jones for that. Because this is a guy in Antonio Brown who was underestimated at every juncture of his career. A guy who was, I don't mean to make like a huge hero out of him. He was homeless as a kid. He was a walk-on at Central Michigan. He was way too small to play in the pros. And he was, listen, the best he can do is be a backup to Mike Wallace. And at each juncture, he has not just exceeded expectations, but completely shattered them. The other thing that's, that's different about Antonio Brown, you hear it all the time, and I understand why. Guys need motivation. You, you see this with the, the interplay with Riley and, and, and LeBron, who's motivating who and who said what to yeah. whom and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, this guy never talks about the chip on his shoulder. And what he says to me in, in the piece 
is, you know, I, I didn't have to prove anyone wrong. I knew what I was, and I know I'm going to work harder than the next guy. When the, there's a guy out there, a young guy who thinks he's better than I am, he'll be thinking that, and I'll be working. So there's something enormously endearing about this guy so who, is, who is not, you know, not standing over you, doesn't have a chip on his shoulder, um, has none of the, you know, you guys counted us out bit. Mm. He's just a nice dude, and he is as tough as there is, man. Mark, He's as tough as there is. And that's tonight on NFL 360 on, on NFL Network at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. I've got a couple minutes left with you here. There's so many different ways we could go. I'm hanging out for the rest of the day. I love it. You love it here, huh? It's Fantastic. Great. we got Stone Street coming in and uh, Samuel Jackson on the phone. Um, that's coming up on the show and your phone calls. Um, we could talk about the fight over the weekend, your name the book, but I, I want to spend the last couple of minutes. Explain to me what fight night like is at, like at Casa Kriegel with Ed O'Neill from Modern Family. <laughs> Let's go. You're, you're tight with him. What what in the world is it like when you have, it's a UFC night or is any no, fight it, night? It, what is it? We, we don't do it for UFC. We do it. Okay. We do it uh, for boxing. Fights. So did you just boxing do it this night. past weekend? We did, we did not. I was watching it at my gym, but okay. what we typically do is drink a, a, a lot of wine mm -hmm. and and I like for Mayweather Pacquiao did you give me what was May, had, what was Mayweather Pacquiao like it is this your Ed, house or is it Ed's house it's my house? house okay your house Ed don't want the riffraff in his house <laughs> but okay. I cook for 50 people what so, so I don't know what Rich I swear I don't know what the hell happened to me but so, when I came out here I'm not wearing socks a lot of things you got boat shoes on no, in no, New York no wait listen uh -huh. but with no socks something happened to me I'm, I'm like straight up Jewish, yeah. you know, yeah. from from a couple blocks from the garden in Manhattan. And when I got divorced, I came out here, like this little Italian lady tried to escape. And, and on fight <laughs> night, she does. So I make like sausage and peppers for, for 50 people, uh -huh. chicken thighs. I started doing a, like a chicken parmesan. Oh, man. Meatballs. I, I just sit there by the stove. Can I come next time plus three over come. there? Those guys? Absolutely. Over there? We're in. So Del Tufo is going to bring the ZD. Bring the ZD. Bring the ZD. The fame Del Tufo ZD. No, you don't. It better be good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me I'll tell you something. I'm, I'm the best. I, I'm the best pork cooking Jew, certainly in the Western <laughs> Hemisphere. Okay? You might be the only. You do realize that that's not kosher. I do pork chops and peppers. I got my own kosher. <laughs> Kriegel kosher? That's a new Circle K? Yeah, very nice. Yeah, you know. I've just been there. So what is Ed? What is Ed? What is Ed doing? Does he? What does he bring? Because he cooks Ed, too. Because uh, Stone Street says he's Mr. Crockpot. He's, he got his crockpot. Yeah. He'll he'll call you in the morning. First, Ed brings primarily spectacular Zinfandels. Um, parks himself on one spot on the couch, and if you say anything about anything good about Floyd Mayweather, mm -hmm. chances are you you get smacked. <laughs> and Ed's a big, Ed's a big guy. Yeah. But um, his crock pot is 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 a, an item of such intense affection. He will call you up in the morning, say, and tell you uh -huh. just apropos of nothing. Hey, how you doing? What are you, what are you doing? And then he'll answer. Listen, I just put in the crock pot like some. It's gonna beef. What I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't cook with a crock pot. But he'll give you the the ingredients and. <laughs> Like when it'll be ready, he'll give you the forecast on it. But I'll tell you, I've come over afterward, yeah. and he can cook his ass off. <laughs> he really can. Mark Kriegel, thanks for coming on, man. My pleasure. You are the best. Uh, uh, you want to hang out? Hang out. All right, you hang out one more second. the full bar back there. Well, I don't have that. You, you want to talk Buddy Ryan when we come back? You want to take a I phone call, to. too? You want to take a phone call from one I, of my I'd listeners? I'd love to talk Buddy Ryan. I, I don't okay. want to bring down the listeners. No, it's okay. It's all good. Mark Kriegel's here on the Rich Eisen Show. 844204 Rich is the number to dial. Uh, we'll we'll take your phone calls as well. Eric Stone Street. Maybe we'll get an Ed O'Neill story out of him when he comes up next hour from Secret Life of Pets. And Sam Jackson will be on this show, hour number three. Don't go anywhere. Back with more. Welcome back to the Rich Eisen Show. Our poll question today is brought to you by True Car. Save time and money by downloading True Car's mobile app. Configure the new car you want, see what others paid for it, and get guaranteed savings. True Car users save on average over $3,000 off MSRP. Save time and save money. Download the True Car app today as the poll question currently stands. At the end of our first hour of three here on a Wednesday show, Brockman. Wait, I'm going to ask Mark, would you think less of Kevin Durant if he joined the Warriors? Yes or no? 
add the no to the mix, and the All total right. would be right now. Fifty-three percent say yes. Uh huh. Wow, James in Seattle, Washington. Gratuitous you're on the hater. Rich. You're on the Rich Eisen show with Mark Kriegel. James. Uh -huh. Hey guys. Hey, I'm from, I'm from Seattle, like you said. So uh, yep. I'm a old Sonics fan, and uh, it was heartbreaking <laughs> when they went to Oklahoma. So no, I wouldn't think less of them. I already think as least as possible as I can about the whole team. <laughs> uh, I'm a fan of Thunder, and uh, I would totally get it if you went there. Why wouldn't you? LeBron did it in the Miami, and, he, and we're all we're doing now is counting his rings. We're not we're not looking back. Yeah, uh, I guess. Um, what, what? what was it? Why are you holding I, uh, Durant responsible for the fate of the franchise? For the Sonics, well, he didn't move them. Well, we've been uh, – last I heard, uh, Westbrook's the most athletic guy in the NBA, so uh, apparently they don't need him. Okay, and, uh, there you go, James. And, <laughs> James. Sam, you're just going to hate on the guy no matter no, what. He's Come on. No, 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 no. I got a good thing to say about him. What? I, uh, I got one thing to say about him. I, I, uh, uh, Trump, Trump, Trump. Thank Trump. you, James. There you go. All right, very good. Okay. He feels better about himself right there. Wow. <laughs> Least uh, I'm not the only one highly caffeinated. We got we got uh, we got Kriegs here and James in I'm Seattle. So, uh, buddy, buddy Ryan, what are your thoughts on his passing? We got about two minutes left for you here, Kriegs. Huge, huge loss, not just for the defenses that created mm -hmm. that he created, but also for his progeny. If you look at at Rex and Rob, particularly Rex, they work under the same and tabulistic conceit mm -hmm. that their old man did, which is, listen, just get me a, a half a quarterback. That's all I need. And I'll take care of the rest by going at the other guy's quarterback. And I think you can make an argument that Super Bowl three was in part won by Buddy Ryan and Walt Michaels defense. And this is from the man who wrote Namath the, right, for crying um, out loud. You know, the, the, the Jets were an excellent defensive team that year. And Buddy figured out, the, the, you know, a generation before, the same strategy you saw in the blind side. Well, if the quarterback's the most important guy on the field, how do I get to him? And that's what his entire team was predicated around. I have never seen, not in the NFL, maybe, maybe Lombardi, a guy who inspired so much loyalty, such devotion, such deep affection from his players. And you can see that's what Rex is going for. The question is, is can he win a can he can he win a Super Bowl in Western New York using this mm -hmm. formula that twice with a rookie and second year quarterback got within one game of the Super Bowl? Which is the same question that was posed to his father a generation before. And, and the answer his father gave mm -hmm. was no. I, I, I couldn't win with the Eagles. I couldn't win with the Cardinals. It doesn't mean it wasn't from my perspective, a noble or certainly entertaining experiment. They're great defensive coaches. Um, is, is this the, the Achilles heel of the family? Does this travel through generations, this, yeah. this stubbornness? I don't know, but it's, it's, it's incredibly interesting um, to, to watch it. And I find, as, as a character, each of these three guys, in, enormously endearing. No question about it. Kriegs, thanks for coming on this Thank show. You. At Mark Kriegel on Twitter tonight on NFL 360 at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Mark Kriegel and uh, Antonio Brown. Eric Stone Street still to come on this show. Next hour, he'll be live in studio. Samuel L. Jackson, hour number three. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.